Welcome back to Movie Recapped. Today I will show you a drama, fantasy, horror film from 2016, titled A Cure for Wellness. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. We find our protagonist, Lockhart, working on his laptop on a train in Europe. He has a letter with him that he picks up to review its contents. The letter comes from his company CEO Roland Pembroke and is informing the board of directors that he won't be coming back because he's found the truth and the cure. While Lockhart rereads the letter, he starts remembering how all this started. A couple of days ago, in his New York office, a recently promoted Lockhart is summoned by the board of directors. Once in their office, they show him this letter, which makes everyone think Pembroke has lost his mind during his holiday. The board is worried about the incoming merge, needing Pembroke for legal matters, so they send Lockhart to retrieve him from that sanatorium, a mission he can't refuse because he's threatened with jail thanks to some irregularities found on his business transactions. Back in the present, Lockhart's train makes it to its destination, a station near the Swiss Alps. He's picked up by a driver that works for the sanatorium and points out Lockhart is younger than the usual clients, they're usually elderly and rich, and they never want to leave. When the driver asks Lockhart about his family, we get another flashback, before getting his promotion, Lockhart visited his mother at the retirement home, where she was painting ballerina dolls, and she gifted him one. That ballerina is with him in the present, still in the car. They pass through the local village, where they aren't well received, the locals have never liked the people from the mountain. The driver tells him some history of the place then, the foundations date back to the time of barons, these lands have always belonged to the von Reichmerl family. The last baron was so obsessed with the purity of his lineage that he decided only his sister was good enough to carry his child. When the church protested, he renounced God and on the wedding night, the villagers went up to the castle, dragged the couple to the catacombs and made the baron watch how they burned his sister alive. They burned the whole place afterward, this was 200 years ago. They make it to the residence soon after. As soon as he gets inside, Lockhart asks the receptionist to see Pembroke, but she points out that visiting hours are over. Since she won't make an exception for him, he asks to see the manager before going outside to make a phone call while waiting. A trio of elderly patients that include Victoria Watkins points out there's no signal up there as part of the treatment, but Lockhart keeps trying anyway. Another old man asks him to pass him the ball he just threw and when Lockhart crouches to grab it, he hears some weird noises coming from a small building in the middle of the garden. Moments later, he's received by one of the doctors in his office. While the doctor drinks some drops from a little blue bottle that he claims are vitamins, Lockhart asks for an exception to be able to see Pembroke again. The doctor also turns him down as he explains it's part of the treatment and tells Lockhart a little about it, the sanatorium is built on top of an ancient aquifer with unique rejuvenating properties. Since Lockhart keeps insisting on the importance of his visit, the doctor tells him to come after 7, when the treatments are over. Lockhart drinks a glass of water before leaving. The driver is waiting for him outside. As he enters the car, Lockhart asks him to take him to a hotel so he can make a call. On their way out, they see a mysterious girl standing on one of the walls of the building. They've barely made it to the road when a moose comes out of nowhere and hits the car, making it roll off the road and knocking out Lockhart and the driver. We go through a series of visions then, including a fire, the girl from the wall, the ballerina dolls, eels, blue bottles, and Lockhart's mother passing away alone in the retirement home. Sometime later, Lockhart wakes up in a bed at the sanitarium where he finally meets the doctor in charge, Heinrich Vohm. After he tells Lockhart he's been there for three days, Lockhart takes the sheets off him only to find his leg in a cast. Vollmer tells him he's already called Lockhart's bosses to tell them about the accident, and they said Lockhart's health is more important, which sounds very unlike them. He also tells him that since they're on high altitudes, he should drink plenty of water. Now Lockhart is stuck there until he recovers. When he drinks his glass of water, he can't help noticing a tiny worm-like creature in it. Lockhart leaves his room and explores the sanitarium in search of Pembroke, he learns he's in the sauna after lying to a nurse to get the information. When he gets to the sauna, Lockhart feels a bit at loss, there seems to be room after room connected to each other, and at some point, he can't even find a door, thinking he's trapped. A noise suddenly alerts him of a door reappearing and when he turns around, he sees a moose passing by. When he enters that room, he finally finds Pembroke. Lockhart tries to convince him to return to New York, but Pembroke refuses, saying he's not well, even if he doesn't look like it. While Lockhart continues to talk business, Pembroke changes rooms to get into a swimming pool, after being underwater for a moment, he resurfaces and accepts to go back to work for a few days. Hours later, Lockhart approaches the receptionist and tells her to call for a car that will take him to the station. He leaves for the gardens afterward, and he can't help staring at the small garden building. Victoria notices this and approaches him to tell him about the history of the place by showing him a book, that's the former church where the baron hanged the priest. Lockhart tells her about the incest situation, which she didn't know about. After she leaves for her treatment, Lockhart starts hearing a female voice singing and decides to follow the sound. Near a well behind the building, he finds the girl he saw on the wall the day he arrived. When he asks her if there's something in the water, she says there is, but he doesn't see anything. 
The girl explains she is a patient here, much younger than average because she's a special case. When he says he isn't a patient and he was just leaving, she mentions nobody ever leaves. After she notices she's being watched from a window, the girl leaves, but not without introducing herself, her name is Hannah. Lockhart returns to the sanitarium, but there's nobody at the reception desk and Pembroke isn't in his room either. He goes to the dining room next, where doctors and patients alike are having diner, to confront Volmer. Apparently, Pembroke relapsed so he can't leave, but Lockhart doesn't buy it, he thinks the doctors are keeping the patients sick for the sake of the business. He starts to threaten with legal action when suddenly his nose starts bleeding and his mind gets dizzy before he passes out. He wakes up in Volmer's office, who is giving him an examination. After that's done, Lockhart notices a picture of Hannah on the doctor's desk, Volmer tells him she's a special case because she went through severe trauma as a child and she has development problems, she didn't speak until she was 11, and that she's like a daughter to him. He changes the subject then and tells Lockhart he ran some tests after the accident, the results aren't good, he thinks Lockhart is a very advanced case for such a young age. So he offers him to go through the purification treatment while waiting for Pembroke to get better, Lockhart accepts to play along. When Volmer leaves the office to find a nurse, Lockhart opens a cabinet and steals Pembroke's file, he also finds another of those blue bottles. When the doctor returns, Lockhart distracts him by asking about a locket that was hanging nearby as he hides the stolen files in his clothes. Volmer tells him the locket was found during the rebuilding and used to belong to the Baroness, a very sick woman. It was the Baron that found out about the healing properties of the water when trying to find a cure for her. A nurse comes to pick him up to take him to the isolation chamber then. Before the treatment, Lockhart must urinate in a cup and when he leaves it next to other samples, he notices the other patient's cups have something weird floating in them. He's put in a huge metal chamber afterward, which is filled with water. He's told not to be surprised if he has some visions, which is a common side effect, and that he should knock on the chamber window if he needs anything. The visions start pretty quickly, first he sees some memories of his father, but then he sees Hannah, which makes him open his eyes and notice the eels that are now with him in the tank. Panicking, Lockhart knocks on the window to no avail, since the doctor is busy being intimate with the nurse and sharing more vitamin drops. Lockhart tries to swim up and open the chamber door, but it's sealed, so he ends up passing out. After remembering the day his father jumped off a bridge, Lockhart wakes up and finds himself on the bridge next to the chamber, the doctor and the nurse next to him. He tells him there's something in the water, but when they look at it with a the torch, there's nothing there. Back in his room, he retrieves Pembrose's file from his hidden spot in his cast. Lockhart doesn't understand the words, but he does find some x-rays that tell him Pembrose was losing his teeth. His reading is interrupted by a sound coming from the bathroom so he goes to investigate, the toilet lever is shaking. Touching it is enough to stop it, and now he's near the window, Lockhart notices something strange, a bald man is taking a body on a stretcher into the church building. The next morning, Lockhart goes to ask Victoria what the church building is being used for nowadays. She says she doesn't know, but she's found out something else, the villagers didn't burn the sanitarium down because of the siblings' marriage, they did it because of the experiments. Peasants had been disappearing and in 1814, farmers found their disfigured bodies, similar to mummies. Before leaving for her treatment, she tells Lockhart that there's a terrible darkness in this place. Lockhart goes to the church building to try to get in, but it's locked. He sees the bald man from last night and asks him about it, but he doesn't speak English. It's then that he sees Hannah passing by on a bike in the distance, so he follows her. When he catches up with her, he offers his ballerina doll in exchange for Hannah giving him a ride to town. She accepts even if she isn't allowed to. Once in town, they enter a bar where they get many weird looks. Lockhart asks for two pints of beers and the closest thing to a doctor, he's told to go see Peter. He takes the beer to a table to share with Hannah and she tells her more about her life, she's been in the clinic for as long as she remembers, her mother passed away when she was a baby, and her father is supposed to come when she feels better. She's also drinking the blue bottle vitamins, which she shares with him. Lockhart tells her to wait for him for a moment while he goes to see Peter, who is a vet but will still read Pembrose's files in exchange for money. He informs Lockhart that the people from the spa are dying from dehydration, which makes no sense considering all the water they drink. Lockhart suspects their experiments like the Baron used to do, and Peter tells him the Baroness wasn't sick, she was infertile. After that he goes back to work, he needs to put a cow that drank black water out of her misery. When he cuts her stomach open, a calf and a bunch of eels come out. Meanwhile, at the bar, one of the locals lends Hannah a coin so she can choose a song at the jukebox, which she starts dancing to. Lockhart returns then and asks the barman for a phone to call New York. When his boss picks up he's very angry, turns out nobody actually called the company to tell them about the accident. Lockhart drops the phone when he notices a guy getting too close to Hannah and he tries to get her away to interrogate her about the vitamins, making the other guy angry. They get into a fight, and Lockhart is threatened with a knife when Volmer makes his appearance at the bar, making everyone back way since they're afraid of him. After scolding Lockhart for taking Hannah to town, both of them are taken back to the clinic. 
After seeing a vision of Hannah in a tub full of eels, Lockhart wakes up in his room and once again, sees the bald man with a stretcher near the church building. The bathroom noises happen again too and when he goes there to stop them, he looks at himself in the mirror to notice a tooth getting loose, so he easily pulls it out. Lockhart runs to see a nurse, and he gives her his tooth to put in milk. While she's doing that, he checks the treatment list to find Pembrose and leaves before the nurse returns. It takes him a lot of walking into the deepest areas of the sanitarium and avoiding many doctors to find the transfusion wing. There are some weird metal chambers, hot to the touch, that confirm some weird experiments are going on. On a stretcher nearby, he finds Victoria, who adds more bits to the story, the Baroness was pregnant the night of the wedding, and the fetus was cut out before they burned her. The baby was thrown in the aquifer and survived, but she doesn't know it. When stepping back from Virginia's creepy touch, Lockhart pushes some trays to the floor and must leave the room before the noises alerted the doctors. He makes it to another room and when he turns on the lights, he finds a terrifying sight, many bodies floating in water, including Pembrose. Scared, he runs away, and Volmer finds him, he pretends to have gotten lost while trying to find someone to check his tooth. They take him to see the clinic's dentist, where he's tied to a chair because they don't use anesthetics. The dentist is in the process of drilling one of Lockhart's good teeth when we cut the sanitarium's entrance, where a new patient is arriving in the usual car. The driver is about to take off when suddenly, a bleeding Lockhart enters the back seat and asks him to get him out of there. When they reach town, Lockhart goes to see a police officer and tells him everything that's happened. The cop is skeptical, and asks him for a way to check his identity, Lockhart gives him his company's phone number because he doesn't have his wallet with him. The officer leaves to make the call and Lockhart notices a blue bottle on the shelves. He doesn't have time to react because when the cop returns, Volmer is with him and says Lockhart has been hallucinating. To prove it, he makes Pembrose come in, who says Lockhart was going to take him way away against his will. Lockhart is taken back to the sanitarium, where he's going through all the treatments. He starts writing a letter very similar to the one Pembrose had written, and when he reaches the part of finding out the truth, he has a realization. He grabs the glass from his desk and breaks it, and with a shard, he cuts his cast open. Turns out his leg had been fine the whole time. Determined to get to the bottom of this, Lockhart leaves for the church building, which he forces open with a shovel. Inside he finds a huge laboratory with eel drawings, baby fetuses in jars and faces floating on dishes. There's also a portrait of the Baroness surrounded by candles. He moves deeper into the cave and finds the bald man throwing bodies into the river for the eels to eat. At the same time in the main building, Hannah gets into a swimming pool and is also approached by eels, who at first swim closer but suddenly form a circle around her as she starts bleeding between her legs. Back in the cave, the bald man notices Lockhart and attacks him, but after some struggling, Lockhart manages to shake him off and ends him with a hit to the head. Both Hannah and Lockhart run away from their locations and meet in the clinic hallways, but Hannah pushes him away to go find Volmer in the dining room. Lockhart follows her inside and starts telling everyone that the doctor is making them sick on purpose so they should stand up against him. The patients start doing so, but they're in a zombie-like state, so they surround Lockhart and capture him. Later on, Lockhart's taken to the transfusion wing. While Volmer Connects puts him in one of the special chambers, he explains how the experiments work, the water from the aquifer is toxic to humans, but with life-restoring properties for the eels. The Baron discovered how to distill the water to create an elixir apt for humans and they use patients for it. They're put in the chambers, forced eels down their throats, and the filtered water leaves their bodies into those little blue bottles. Volmer puts Lockhart through that exact procedure before leaving. The next day, Hannah is told by Volmer that she's a woman now and she's ready. Before joining the doctor for the next step, she visits Lockhart, who looks completely brainwashed and says he doesn't want to leave. Hannah gives him back the doll before leaving to get ready. Later at night, Volmer together with doctors and nurses all dress up rather fancily for a special occasion, Volmer gets married to Hannah, putting the Baroness locket around her neck during the ceremony. They celebrate with a dance, and while the other doctors stay at the party, Volmer takes Hannah to the underground cave, where he shows her the Baroness portrait and a hidden bed as he tells her this is where all began for her. Back in his room, Lockhart snaps out of it thanks to the doll and starts looking more closely at the pictures of the rebuilding of the clinic. After rechecking Victoria's notes and taking a second look at the photograph in the doctor's office, he comes to a realization, Volmer is Baron von Reichmro, and Hannah is the fetus the villagers cut off the Baroness. They've stayed young and alive thanks to the eel water. We cut back to the cave then, where Volmer is telling Hannah that story while tying her to a bed and touching her against her will. When he's about to possess her, Lockhart interrupts them by dropping an oil can on the floor. When he's confronted with the truth, Volmer tears off the skin of his face to reveal the burns under it before pushing Lockhart to the floor. Lockhart wastes no time and turns on a lighter that he drops on the oil, catching Volmer on fire. The fire spreads to the main building through the ventilation shaft while Lockhart tries to rescue Hannah, but Volmer who managed to turn off the flames on his body grabs him and throws him against some shelves. They take the fight downstairs and Volmer grabs Lockhart again by the neck. He's about to throw him to the eels when Hannah, who managed to free herself from the bed, 
shows up behind him, distracts him by calling him dad then finishes him off with a shovel. Volmer falls into the water and becomes eel food, Hannah throws the locket after him. They run outside and find the main building on fire. Doctors and nurses are screaming and running away or trying to help put off the flames, but the patients are dancing in the garden. Lockhart stares at the craziness of it at all but is brought back to reality by Hannah, who's found her bicycle. They leave the place together on the bike, and halfway through the road, a car hits them, the people driving are Lockhart's company's board of directors, who have come to check on him and Pembrose after not getting any news for days. After telling them Pembrose is gone, Lockhart refuses to get in the car. The directors ask him if he's lost his mind, and he replies he actually feels much better before driving away with Hannah on the bike and a big smile on his face. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.